I've never had a warm studio in, I don't know, over 45 years of being in cold, damp spaces on the whole. The idea of having a space at home that is always going to be here, I'm not going to be moved on in a couple of years if there's a break clause in a lease or something, somewhere that is warm and has got brilliant light all the time. The idea of locating it in one place and I can work at night very, very early in the morning, whatever the weather is, however I feel like not going anywhere, it's amazing. Everything is here now, my, like my whole um, analogue archive, by which I mean all my slides up to 2004, I think, and all my 5x4 transparencies and even bigger transparencies. And previously, they've all been stored in, in these filing cabinets in the cellar, but the idea of having them all up here with planned chests, with books, with everything that I need is just, you know, it's never happened before. Everything has always been spread all over the place. A lot of the, the work that's been made from wood has always been reclaimed wood, um, and that goes back years, actually. The piece of work that was at Dialectical Materialism just uh, when Freeze was on last October... That piece of work in a dark wood has only been shown twice. When I made that piece of work, that was all reclaimed timber and it was fabulously expensive. I had no idea where it was going to go. And actually, it stayed in my studio for over two years and now it's back in storage. And it's, a, it's in like four absolutely stonking great crates. So what will happen to it? I, I don't know. And... It actually informed another piece of work that was a big commission, made in mirrored stainless steel, actually. But I feel now, personally, it, it's, really, it's really tough. I, I feel very reluctant to make something very, very large, very ambitious, if I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, how much stuff can you keep on producing that is possibly going to end up in storage. I, I mean, I'm very, very conflicted about making large pieces of work now. I, I'm interested in where this is going, actually. Um, and it, it is... It has a lot to do with sustainability, I think, and not making work with huge amounts of stuff that comes from God knows where. I've got a lot of tools that actually, to be honest, I don't know how to use. And in fact, I'm not technically brilliant, but I, there are certain things I know how to do. I understand how things go together, actually. I'm not so good at that fine, you know, how to cut something brilliantly, how to make a clever joint. But I always know people who can do it for me. I like things to be put together very, very directly. That's... That's my instinctive way of, of working. When I was a young artist, I was a keen follower of Brancusi, or Brancush, as they say in Romania. And I was very clear that things should be put together in that cup and saucer way. You have a thing, you put a thing on it, and that's how it's going to be with no, with no fixings that are hidden, no glue, nothing like that. They've got to sort of cup and saucer together, and for a long time I worked like that. In fact, now, I don't give a stuff about that. <laughs> I, use, I use quite a lot of glue, and um, I'm just less bothered. I mean, I like things to go together directly, but I think my attitude, I'm not such a... I'm not the kind of purist that I used to be, I think. I've always found it really important to be able to work on a kind of small handheld object and a lot of the time when something really big is having to be fabricated outside of the studio by an engineering company or you know I lose touch with it I've lost control which is also interesting if you lose control you don't quite know what's going to happen when it comes back it's always a shock can be a good shock can be 
kind of, oh, now, now what? So in order to carry on with something else, I love making these small things, and they are very... They're, they are very intimately made, and I would be in control of the whole thing. I can hold it, pick it up. And all the smaller works tend generally to be sold, whereas, you know, a large, if I make a large piece of work, it, it won't. I would say at the moment I am quite stuck, even though I'm, I'm making these small things, I'm really, really stuck with them. When I look back, I have to remind myself that actually... I've been here before, I've been really stuck and got unstuck, and I have made things that I've been really proud of, and it's not the end of the, not the, end of the world to feel like this. That when something kind of doesn't fit with what you're making, it can fit with something else, and it's a, it's a, it can be an ongoing process. And that's what it's like with drawing, actually, with me, that I start with one drawing and, and then it will spawn into eight or nine that I'm doing at the same time and that's that's brilliant that's how I like to work I feel completely in control here I know where everything is and um, I can lay my hands on anything there's none of the none of this scurrying around where did I leave those books where's this how am I going to do this no it's all it's brilliant the source of my information on every piece of work, whether it's a drawing or a sculpture, the bedrock of my practice is all in these very, very small notebooks that I've started. Uh, I started in the early 70s, actually. And every piece of work has a number, has always had a number, a description. I know where it's been. I know who owns it. And for me, that's the thing I care about. I don't really give a stuff about, <laughs> about all the digital um, how to keep control of it, how to get hold of a high-res image. But when we finished the whole archive, and that's all on Artist Archive, which is obviously fantastic, we will be going back to the pre-numbering, which occupies a whole special drawer in my filing cabinet, which is work from when I was at college up until... 1980, possibly. So there's, there's, a, there's quite a lot of stuff. The archive boxes on the top shelf behind me, they contain all my notebooks, which maybe probably started in the late 60s, actually. And in a haphazard sort of way, the trajectory of every piece of work, in some shape or form, is in there. And it's, it is quite annoying that when I want to find something out... There's never the information that I really want to be found, but there's a lot of other stuff about how depressed I am or, or what I've got to do in the evening or, or, or something and how everything is going wrong. But there's, there's a lot of really... a lot of stuff about how things get made, which it's, I suppose it's quite interesting because the Henry Moore Institute asked me whether I would leave them they, they want them for their archive. And I, I think I've said no, actually, that I would probably like them to be burnt. They're, they're, I think they're almost too... They're, they're too intimate. They, they say too much about other things. But obviously, um, I suppose if I was anyone else, I would really want to get my <laughs> hands on them, actually. Um, but if I left a thing in my will that I, I re wanted all my notebooks to be burnt you can bet your life that they wouldn't get burnt. So either I would have to do it myself. I think that would be really tough, actually. It's like a diary, I suppose, or a, a, a sort of journal of, of making or unmaking of, yeah, cul-de-sacs, red herrings, <laughs> black moments, but also um, good times, yeah, when things go really well, because... When, when you've made a piece of work that you know has done something that you didn't know that you could do, I mean, there is nothing like it. There really is nothing like it.